Right here I am again, second morning, looking at, I think that's Wedge Mountain over Leavenworth. So I'm going to mix my colors now, matching them to this beautiful early morning light. It's about 8 a.m. Cool and a little bit misty, which adds some nice soft atmosphere, especially to the foothills. So taking a look at the pictures and of the painting, the underpainting I came up with, what I want to do, I want to change it slightly. I want to shrink all this kind of busy detail here in the lower third. I want to make it smaller so that it really makes the mountain feel huge. Alright, I've got a bunch of colors mixed up. I'm sorry about the road noise. I'm right on a road that isn't too busy, but seems to have a lot of large, noisy vehicles rolling past, including some fire engines. Must be a fire station nearby. So I've got the sky colors. It's pretty far away from white, um, down close to the horizon. The wispy clouds have a nice purplish, peachy color to them. A little lighter, a little darker variations on purple-blue. Then I've got the mountain shadows and the mountain sun. So this is the sun on the snow. I can also dip into this to shift it a little bluer and even some of these to shift it bluer. But really a kind of a pink and a yellow. I don't have pure white to go on the mountain. I try to avoid that if I can. I find if I put pure white on, on there, unless it's just a very tiny accent point, it can make the whole painting kind of feel disjointed and chalky. Then I've got the middle ground mountain, shadow on the pines, sun on the pines, kind of shadow on the rock and sun on the rock, very all close to the same value. I can also, again, dip into some of these colors to shift the color around if I need to. Middle ground pines, really, this is the darkest dark, the vertical upright of the pine in shadow, pine and sun. There's some deciduous trees down there that are leafing out, more deciduous trees leafing out. Then I've got a couple of yellow shades for the apple trees just starting to bloom, a little greener, a little yellower. Then there's a foreground tree that is pretty vibrant and the foreground grass. So I may break out a little smaller brush since it's a really pleasant spot and I've got time. I've got time to take my time. I also mixed up more colors than I normally would uh, just because it's such a pleasant morning and I know the light's not going to change too much for a while although it is going to get hot here in the sun. I'll get set up and start painting. I'm really debating whether to try to take oils on my trip to France or if I should just switch to to gouache. In the past I would travel with watercolor, which works great, but I like the richness of oils and gouache, so I'm really thinking about trying out gouache on this next trip. Start with a uh, Rosemary number two, evergreen long flat, and I'll paint the snow on the mountain, get those clean colors down first. I've got a little more of this yellow down here, because I may use it throughout the scene. I wanted to mix up extra. And this really high value yellow is titanium white and a little bit of Naples yellow. This Naples yellow really blends nicely with white. It very subtly shifts the, the color warmer. <clears throat> not really toward this cool yellow and not as strong as the cadmium yellow. So 
So as usual, I'm just going to work darker in the light values on the snow. So I'll start with my highest, lightest white, lightest light, and then I'll add some of this lavender and then shift it bluer. And then I'll go into the shadows on the snow. I find that starting with the lights first with snowy mountains really works well. It keeps that snow clean. Good morning again. Hello again. I, I, sus I subscribed. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Not even bothering to clean my brush, just going right into this next highest value. No need to clean the brush. It's the same value really, just slightly pinker. Um, I find glancing back and forth at the subject quite often helps and not staring too long at any one place moving around the, the canvas. A lot of plein air instructors for beginners, um, a lot of plein air instructors will tell you to start with darks and block in big shapes. And I think that works great if you're lacking time. So work very small, like a five by seven or an eight by 10 to begin with, and just block in big shapes. So if you're short on time or if you're a beginner, that's, that's great advice. But after that, as you practice, you'll learn You'll experiment, hopefully, and you'll figure out what works for you. And it's not always the, the same old, same old approach. Sometimes taking a risk and developing your own style and method will lead to some unique effects. I'm going to dip into just a little bit of this lightest sky color, shift it slightly bluer. Slightly bluer and slightly darker. So now I switch to this rosemary number seven, evergreen, long flat. Beautiful brush for painting the sky. I just want to map in the, the highest value of the sky and correct the mountain silhouette just a bit. Try to make these shapes slightly more interesting, slightly less regular. I want to compare the, the value of the sky to the, the snow I've put down as well. Alright, now back to the smaller brush and I'll start laying in the shadows on the mountain.
Here's where you can see that the transparent qualities of oil paint can help you. The, the darkness of the wash here is helping me. I can lay over a, a lighter, bluer color, but the purple underpainting, the purple wash is still shining through the layer I'm putting down, just subtly so that it offers a little bit of warmth and a little bit of depth. It's hard to take advantage of that when you're plain air painting because it, in the crush of trying to get the painting done, you, you tend to paint thick and fast. If you're not careful, painting the lights first can cause you trouble because as you paint the darks next to them, you get some unintended blending. So that is, that is a disadvantage to painting the lights first. You can muddy up your darks. I find if you just preserve your darks with the wash and then go in and paint them later, it can look kind of like paint by numbers. It can be a little boring, but if you're, I find if you, if you can be subtle about it and deviate where you need to and shift your colors a lot on the fly, get some nice subtle transitions. It works well, can work well. Taking my time, I worked my way down the mountain, working from light to dark and from far to near. Wherever I can, I try to use the colors that I pre-mixed, but I don't hesitate to shift the color to match what I'm actually seeing. I begin to introduce green on the slopes to suggest the pine trees. Darker, bluer green in the shadow, lighter yellow green in the sun. I'm not coming anywhere near painting individual trees. I'm just blocking in big patches of color and value to suggest the forest on the slopes. I try to hold my brush well back so that I get a light touch an almost calligraphic brush stroke. I want to keep my lines smooth and I find holding the brush far back on the handle helps with that. Wherever I can I put in a long brush stroke to cover a lot of surface with one brush stroke. I think that adds interest and suggests a bravura approach, suggests confidence. Now I'm just stepping back a little bit and trying to see what the painting needs to read. I'm finding it needs a little bit of touch up on the whites, on the highlights, and a little bit of texture. And the light is changing on the mountain too, so I, I want to be aware of that. I don't want to chase that too much. Put too much texture down, you can scrape it back. That's what's nice about working on linen or canvas is that bumpy texture lets you scrape back. Now moving into the middle ground hill. I'm gonna go pretty quick here. I'm, light's changing and uh, I feel like I'm getting a little bit tired after concentrating so heavily on that 
the focus of the painting, that background mountain. I don't regret putting a lot of time into the, the background mountain. I wanted to, to catch it, get it consistent while I had the light. So I don't want to rush through the foreground, but I I don't feel any pressure to get it to any level of finish. As long as I can get the color notes down and make sure it has the feel of the place, I'll be pretty happy. I can finish up the foreground in the studio. So here's a little trick. As you, this is dark up here. This is the, the middle ground shadow pine color. So I'm mapping that in. I'm leaving some space for some deeper rock shadow. But as I come down to the foreground, I know this foreground is going to be darker and more contrast, so I can slightly lighten this shadow color. With the light on the pine color and just put a gradient in so that down toward the bottom of the mountain, it's generally lighter and maybe slightly cooler, so then it stands out against this middle ground. Okay, now I'm moving into the darkest darks, the middle ground pine trees. I'm gonna use a smaller brush, number one, Rosemary Filbert, and try to keep these shapes irregular and small in the, in the landscape. I feel like I'm getting a sunburn, but I don't wanna stop, I'm getting close to the end and I don't want to stop and slather on sunscreen even though I probably should. I did have a little house here but the scale of it's just too big so I'm whittling into it. I may or may not put the little house in at all. did here is I didn't like how this was just such a straight triangle so I kind of wiped out that edge for now and it does that actually in the in reality here it does bend but not quite that soon so I'll, I'll figure out what I want to do with that later if I decide to touch this up more okay the next light is the Sun on these dark pines that's not quite reading light enough, so I'm going to add a little bit of this. That's not quite enough, so add a little bit of this. Nice and abstract. Now, grab a clean brush. Maybe a bristle and try out these
apple trees in the foreground here. They're very high value for trees because the bark is gray, light gray, and the blossoms themselves are white or pink. Just going to go with an abstract pattern. Get the color masked in. The sun's coming from here, so very subtly the the tree will be lighter on this side and darker on this side. seems to pick up a little bit of purple lavender as it moves away from me. So I'll add some of the sky lavender to the mix as it moves further this way. There are rows to these trees. They're coming directly at me here. They're kind of curving this way here. So I'll try to suggest that with some of the brush strokes as well. Bristle brush is adding a lot of nice texture. All right, and then finally, foreground grassy area. Take a pointed round and try to lightly sketch in just a few of the trunks of these trees just to suggest they are trees. Give this big abstract line some kind of meaning. I'm debating whether to add this tree over here so close to the corner. Just drop it in and see if it adds anything to the composition. I thought I'd need it maybe to keep things from going out this kind of empty corner. where it ended up. Yeah, beautiful weather, beautiful day, beautiful area. Really had fun painting Wedge Mountain. I'll take it back to my studio and clean it up just a bit. Put it out on my website. As always, thanks so much for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Let me know if you have any questions. Share it with a friend. If you'd like to support the channel, please visit my website. I sell these little plain air pieces at a reasonable price because I consider them practice. It really makes me happy when someone likes my art enough that they want to hang it in their home. You can also sign up for my newsletter and stay up to date on my new work and shows and get a discount on original art and prints.